Um, I, I was somewhat humored by your request that Mr. Blumenauer not bully um, to get something done when all we're talking about is the president bullying to get something he wants done. But having said that, um, I'd like to clarify uh, one point about the whistleblower protection from the article that Mr. Conway um, just provided. The law reads, expressly restricts the Inspector General's office from disclosing whistleblowers' identities. It says, quote, the Inspector General shall not disclose the identity of the employee without the consent of the employee unless the Inspector General determines that such disclosure is unavoidable during the course of the investigation or the disclosure is made to an official of the Department of Justice responsible for determining whether a prosecution should be undertaken. Unquote. That appears to be the lone statutory restriction on disclosing a whistleblower's identity applicable only to the Inspector General's office. We found no court rulings on whether whistleblowers have a right to anonymity under the ICWPA or related statutes. Vladek said it is nonetheless a best practice to avoid disclosure of the Ukraine whistleblower's identity given the concerns about retaliation. McCulloch said, we've stepped into bizarro land when senior policymakers are trying to yank a CIA employee into the public spotlight in retaliation for making a whistleblowing blowing complaint, especially when they are credible threats to that employee's personal safety. And I don't know why our colleagues on the other side of Wait, the aisle— Would you let it yield? Would um, you let it yield? No, I'm, I'm afraid I only have three minutes, and I have some other issues, but thank you. Well, the end of the article does uh, go through that and also says it's three Pinocchios in spite of that conversation. Well, Mr. Um, the President of the United States has five Pinocchios on a daily basis, so let's not go there. <laughs> Ambassador Sondland, um, in your uh, deposition, you lamented, quote, I was truly disappointed that the State Department prevented me at the last minute from testifying earlier on October 8, 2019. But your issuance of a subpoena has supported my appearance here today, and I'm pleased to provide the following testimony. So it is clear that the White House, the State Department, did not want you to testify at that deposition. Is that correct? That's correct. And since then, you have on numerous occasions during your opening statement today indicated that you have not been able to access documents in the State Department. Is that correct? Correct. So you have been hampered in your ability to provide testimony to this committee. Is that correct? I've been hampered to provide completely accurate testimony without the benefit of those documents. In terms of your conversations with the President of the United States, what percentage of your conversations uh, were about Ukraine as compared to your other duties? I don't recall. Well, and you've only had six conversations or seven conversations with the President, you said. So about, about Ukraine, I think. So you've had many other conversations. Oh, yeah, about unrelated, completely unrelated matters. So how many conversations with the President of the United States have you had? Again, I don't want to give you a number because it's going to be wrong if I don't have the records. Is it less than 20? It's probably in that range. All right. Um, would you say that delay in military aid and the lack of a meeting in the White House works to the benefit of Russia? Repeat the question again, please. Would you say that the delayed, delay in, in military aid to Ukraine and the reluctance to have a White House meeting has a benefit to Russia? I think it could be looked that way, yes, looked at that way. All right, I'm going to just speak very briefly about code. Um, when the when Michael Cohen was before the Oversight Committee, he was asked, uh, you suggest the President sometimes communicates his wishes to, indirectly. For example, you say, quote, Mr. Trump did not directly tell me to lie to Congress. That's not how he operates. It would be different, he said. The nice, uh, he doesn't give you questions, he doesn't give you orders, he speaks in code. And I understand the code because I've been around him for a decade. So do you think that the president was speaking in code when he would talk about wanting investigations? 
I don't, I can't characterize how the president was speaking. Every conversation I've had with the president has been fairly direct and straightforward. All right, with that I yield back. Mr. Stewart. 